what I like best about the Terry and Jesse show is that it revives my hope in men to be godly men. It's a really good show because it's relatable to family life, daily life. It's encouraging. It's like cheerleading also for Catholics. But number one, the reason I like it, because you guys aren't afraid to speak the truth. You are both the most compassionate hosts I've ever heard. And as a Jewish convert, I am a much better informed Catholic. Thank you, Terry and Jeffy. I just think it's the best thing that we have here in L.A. It's awesome. I'm hooked. This, this is the Terry and Jesse show. We invite you to this holy hour of power. This is not low-energy Catholic radio. We're two Catholics with a Ph.D. in common sense. Our program is not right versus left. It is right versus wrong. This is blue-collar Catholic radio. The Terry and Jesse show stands for Totally Jesus, Truth and Justice, Terry and Jesse. Today we're going to talk about Rick Warren. You're saying, why do you want to talk about a Protestant pastor? Well, there's a lot of things about Rick Warren that I like, and we're going to share with you a small clip of some of the things that he says about the Catholic Church. Rick Warren is called by the media. They call him America's pastor. He's the Protestant pastor of Saddleback Church over in uh, Orange County, Southern California. He's also known around the world because he's written a best-selling book. They say it's, it's, it's second only to the Holy Bible in sales. It's called A Purpose Driven Life. Well, he did two interviews with Raymond Arroyo on EWTN, and that's what I want to talk to you about. He talks about, the first interview we're going to play, talks about his son Matthew's suicide, which he says was five days after Easter. Can you imagine that? I can't even imagine something like that. He said his son suffered from mental illness, and uh, he says that his son, his heart loved God. In his heart, he loved the Lord, but his mind was tortured. Can you relate to that? I think a lot of us can relate to that. And the day his son Matthew took his life, Rick Warren was doing a radio program. Ironically, the show that he was doing that day was called The Battle for Your Mind. In this radio interview that we're going to also share with you, he talks about his love of the divine mercy. Yep, the chaplain of the divine <laughs> mercy. Right. And I believe he's a very sincere man. He's very open about his feelings. And right now, you know what? I haven't done so. I've, I've, it's been a long time. But I want to pray for his son, Matthew, right now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Matthew, O Lord, and let, and let your perpetual light shine upon him. May the soul of Matthew... Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And I also pray that our sweet Jesus and Mother Mary, I pray that you bring comfort day by day and healing to Rick Warren, his wife, and his family over the loss of their son. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, please comfort and heal them. Amen. Amen. Rick Warren, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rick Warren's also made one more comment before we go right to the video clip. Here's what he said about uh, the new evangelization. Or he actually said this about... The video that runs on television and radio by Tom Peterson, Catholics Come Home. Here's what Rick Warren said, quote, The mission of Tom Peterson and Catholics Come Home to bring souls home to Jesus and the church is critically important during this challenging time in our history. I fully support this new evangelization project, and he's right. Having too many inactive Catholics is a bad witness for the church, whether you're Catholic or not. That's Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life. We want to go right to the first video. Go ahead, Mr. Engineer, if you can play the, the interview. I'm, I'm not the same man I was a year ago. I have the same personality. But I have a new understanding of Jesus, a new understanding of God's purpose in our lives, uh, I hopefully a new sympathy for people in pain. Did you ever doubt your faith and wonder why would God allow this after all I've listened yeah. for all I've tried to do in my life? Well, no, I've never doubted God. I doubted his, his wisdom, mm -hmm. okay? In other words, it's like my kids. My kids have never doubted that they had a father, mm -hmm. and they've never doubted that their father loves them. They have often doubted my wisdom. <laughs> do you know what you're doing? Sure. And actually, in, in times of grief, we go from shock to sorrow, and then this third stage is what I call struggle. And that's when you ask the why questions. Now, there's nothing wrong with asking why. Even Jesus asked why on yeah. the cross. My God, my God, why? why? Okay. Mm -hmm. But the test is, what do you do when you don't get an answer? Because you're not going to get the answer on this side of eternity. Mm. You're not gonna, we're not going to know the whys. 
Part of it is we don't have the brain capacity. It's like an ant trying to understand the internet. The ways of God will be fully understood in eternity. But what do you do when you don't get the answer? You go to stage four, which is surrender. Mm. And that's where peace is. And I remember writing in my journal, I'd rather walk with God and not have my questions answered than have all my questions answered and not walk with God. See, Ray, what we think when we're in pain, we immediately try to find an explanation. Get, get, get out of it. Yeah, but explanations don't satisfy. Explanations don't comfort. If my wife were to drop dead tomorrow and I knew why she died, it wouldn't make it any less painful. Mm -hmm. So explanations don't, we waste too much time. We, what gives us comfort is, is the presence of God, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit indwelling in our lives. That's what comforts us, not the explanation. We listened to a little clip right now from Rick Warren's interview with uh, Raymond Arroyo, and he was talking about the death of his son Matthew, the suicide of his son Matthew, and he was so honest with what he said. He, he said, look, it, we're not going to get the answers in this lifetime. And I love the analogy that he, that he gave. He said, it's like an ant trying to understand the Internet. <laughs> he yep. says the ways of God will be fully understood in eternity. So... So what do we do when we don't get the answer? He says, we've got to take that pain and surrender, surrender. And he says, I would rather walk with God and not have my questions answered in this lifetime than have all my questions answered and not walk with God. And he explains something that my partner Terry has been saying for years. He says, explanations about suicide don't provide the answer. He says, what gives us comfort is living in the presence of God. Yeah, that's a powerful clip. And folks, we're going to have some more clips of Rick Warren. I want to mention something before we play this next clip that Dr. Scott Hahn actually met with Rick Warren back in the fall when Pope Francis came to the United States. And I found that it was a fascinating conversation. I was having dinner with Dr. Hahn in October, and he said, you know, um, I, was, I was behind the stage and Rick Warren uh, said to me, you know, Dr. Hahn, I really loved your book, The Lamb's Supper. I found that to be a most illuminating book on why, what the Catholic Mass is all about. I never knew any of that, and I just well, found it fascinating. And now you got me reading a couple of the other books. My take on Rick Warren is that, with everybody's prayers, that he will become a Catholic someday because he's saying so many things that are Catholic. And I think when you hear his next clip uh, regarding the mercy of God that this is going to just make you go, wow, this is Rick Warren who had the best-selling book after the Bible, His Purpose Driven Life. I read it. I thought it was great. So here's a man who's very active, very um, influential, and he's really pointing out things about the Catholic faith that really touched me. And because we're going to talk about divine mercy, I want to give away Father Donald Calloway's video, his DVD on divine mercy, where he explains the history of it. And... Um, also, he prays with you, Divine Mercy. So if you've never prayed the Divine Mercy Chaplet, let Father Calloway help you do that. Call 877-526-2151 to get it. That's 877-526-2151. Jesse, you also, later in the show, are going to uh, tell us a wonderful story how ecumenical you were at a, at, a, at a funeral where Catholics and Protestants were at, and you brought in Divine Mercy, and it was like a bridge. So I don't want to have it do it now, but later promise me that you'll tell the people the story. Yeah, I'll share the story the way I, uh, yeah. I prayed the chaplet of the Divine Mercy at a Protestant fundamentalist <laughs> anti-Catholic church. There were six Protestant pastors there, fundamentalists. Half of the congregation was ex-Catholics that were now fundamentalist Protestants. And I sat with the pastors, and I showed them the prayers of the Divine Mercy. They were blown away. They said, we agree with everything it says here <laughs> in these prayers. Atonement. The blood of uh, Christ. Blood of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. uh, make reparation. Yeah. So one of the things that I've noticed, and Rick, you're going to hear Rick Warren say it, the Divine Mercy, I believe, this is a prayer. It's going to be, it's going to be bridged uh, ecumenism. Oh, yeah. Proper ecumenism. Exactly. Because this is something that... Protestants can really latch on to initially is the blood of Jesus and his blood atonement. They're going to say, we're in with that. And then after, when they convert, like Dr. Hahn will say and Tim Staples will tell you, then they start learning and accepting Our Lady. 
that seems to be like the last juncture, the, the <laughs> last hurdle. But do, I think the divine mercy is the first thing we want to put out there when it comes to ecumenical dialogue. Let's put Rick Warren on in the second well, interview. Yeah, it, let's wait until after the break, Jess, because we're going to come up with a quick break, and I don't want to break it. Folks, you're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. Just so you know, this Saturday we're having our first radio meeting at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. And uh, Father John Struso, who was our priest at the Spiritual Warfare Conference, is going to be talking about divine mercy. And he's going to be encouraging all of us to go to confession. Great idea, don't you think? If you'd like to come, it's free. You just come to the conference. It starts at 10 o'clock this Saturday, the 11th of February, at the Sacred Heart Chapel. If you want to come, just call us at 877-526-2151. We'd love to have you come. Also, just a quick note, I want to remind everybody... We are going to be going on a seven-day round-trip California coastal cruise, April 16th to the 23rd. There's still time for you to come. Not only is Jesse and his wife going to be there, I'll be there with my wife. We're going to hang out for seven days. We're going to be visiting all these great cities, San Francisco, Santa Barbara, San Diego, Ensenada, Mexico. But most of all, we're going to be having mass, confession, rosary. And Jesse and myself, we're going to do some power preaching every night. And we're going to get to know you. You get to know us. We'll have seven days Call Carmen at 805-526-6565 or go and write to Carmen at VeritasCruises.com. If you want to get the DVD of Father Calloway on Divine Mercy, it's free. Just pay the shipping. Call 877-526-2151. That's a $20 DVD I'm going to give away. 877-526-2151. When we come back, I want to blow you away with an interview from Rick Warren talking about Divine Mercy. Don't turn that dial. Thanks for your donations. Let's have it happen again and again and again. God love you. This is the Lord's Gym. We are your spiritual fitness trainers. We're talking about ecumenism, the proper relationship and dialogue that we should have with our Protestant brothers. We're also talking about the divine mercy, as you'll see after this interview. And we're also talking about the theology of suffering and suicide. We just heard in the first segment, Rick Warren uh, the, a, a very well-known Protestant pastor out, out in Saddleback in Southern California talks about grieving over the suicide of his son, Matthew. And uh, now I want to play what he has to say about EWTN and Divine Mercy. And then I want to talk about proper ecumenism. Should we hide our cards or what, what should we do as Catholics? And uh, I think this is a good example. You know what? I'm an avid fan of EWTN. I, I make no bones about it. I probably watch it more than any Christian channel uh, because I happen to like... Well, you know what? Because you have more, more uh, uh, shows that relate to history. Uh -huh. And, and w if you don't understand the roots of our faith, that God has been working for 2,000 years, regardless of what brand of believer you are, God has been working for 2,000 years in His church. And... If you don't have those roots, you're like the cut flower syndrome, or you're a tumbleweed. Yeah. Um, I, one of my favorite shows, which you replete often, is the, the Chapel of Divine Mercy. Really? Which uh, I love, and when I've had a very stressful day, I'll come home, I've got it taped, and Kay and I will both listen, we'll put it on, and just sit back, relax, worship, and, and in, that, in that time of reflection, meditation, quietness, I find myself renewed and restored. So thank you for keep, continuing to replay the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Thank Mother Angelica. Uh, thank you, Mother uh, Angelica. Wow, that's powerful, Jesse. Yeah, he, I, I love this interview with Raymond Arroyo. It's, it came out in the world over. It's two parts. You can, look, you can watch it on YouTube. It's excellent. And I can really tell that he's a sincere oh, man. Yeah. He has a great love for Christ. And he has a great love for the poor. When you listen to his entire interview, this guy really patterns his life after Mother, Mother Teresa. He talks a lot about her in her interview. And this guy is doing so much for the poor. It's incredible. He doesn't take a salary. But here's a couple of things that caught my attention when you watch the entire interview. Okay? We only give you a little sound bite. He ref here's the first thing he did. He referenced Pope Francis, he says, as our new pope. <laughs> okay, I, I caught that in the interview. So did I. He called Pope Francis our new pope. Another thing that he did in the interview, when you watch the whole thing, he mentioned Mother Teresa and Pope John Paul II as 
such important figures in the 20th century that he has pictures of them in his office. He has a picture of Mother Teresa and Pope John Paul II in his office. Also, another thing he said in the interview, he's been working very closely with the Catholic Church in the Diocese of Orange with, with Bishop Van in the area on a project centering on mental health. So Rick Warren's uh, Saddleback and the Diocese of Orange, uh, Bishop Van, they're getting together and they're seeing how, what they can do as, as Christians, as all the... For, for people that suffer from mental health and depression and that mental torture. And again, you also heard the end of it. He said that his favorite Christian TV network, he said it, is EWTN. He said he watches it more often than any other Christian channel. And he said that his favorite show in EWTN, apart from the history, he says is the, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. He said he prays it with his wife. And he said this, it refreshes him like nothing else. When you also watch the interview, he says he's always reading the writings of St. Augustine, St. John of the Cross, Thomas Akenpus, uh, Teresa of Avila. And so when you listen to Rick Warren, he seems to understand or at least have a historical precedence and respect for the Catholic Church. Now, here's the last thing I'm going to make. I'll turn it over to Terry. I found this very interesting that as Catholics, it seems oftentimes we want to Protestantize our liturgies. What do I mean by that? Oftentimes we want to get loud because Protestants are known for loud, exuberant praise and worship. And as Catholics, we seem to want to oftentimes copy that. And it's funny, but Rick Warren, who's grown up in that ambiance all his life with loud, wor loud praise and worship music, he says that what refreshes him like nothing else is the quiet prayer of the divine mercy. So here we have an evangelical who's been around for praise and worship all his life, loud music. He says, what refreshes him more than nothing else is quiet prayer and the divine mercy. And so I think he's rediscovering the beauty of the Catholic. Before we go to Joe in Tempe, Arizona, if you'd like to join in on this conversation regarding divine mercy, suffering, suicide, give us a call at 888 526 888-526-2151, especially if you want to help us reach out to our Protestant brothers in an ecumenical way. I think... Jesse did a fantastic job at a funeral. If you didn't hear, he'll tell you again later in the show how he, div he prayed the divine mercy at a fundamentalist church for the repose of the person's soul, and it went over extremely well. I want to remind us, as Catholics, we understand First Colossians. I fill up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the good of the church. And I just want to acknowledge that there is much suffering in the world which can be transformed into streams of grace if it were accepted and offered in union with the sufferings of our blessed lord if you're listening in the hospital hospitals could be spiritual atomic power plants and drawing divine graces into the world i mentioned this if all christians would understand this great talent properly are you ready the evil one would soon be defeated the world would be converted and countless poor souls would be released from purgatory that's what i believe and i just shared that with you if you agree or disagree let us know. Call us at 888-526-2151. And I'm giving away Father Donald Calloway's DVD on Divine Mercy because I'd love to have you listen to it, watch it, share it with a friend. This is the year of mercy. Get that DVD. It's a $20 DVD. I'm just going to ask you to pay the shipping. Call 877-526-2151. Joe in Tempe, Arizona, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure, Praise brother. the Lord. Praise the Lord is right. Hey, I I think it's a great thing that Pastor Warren is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. looking at our theology in such a different way. However, uh, you know, we're talking about ecumenism, yes. and I'm just, you know, concerned. Say he does come, um, you know, hook, line, and sinker with, you know, <laughs> <laughs> with with Our Lady. Yes. And, and and wants to, wants to become Catholic. Awesome. And then has a and then has a calling to the priesthood, and then but he's married and he's, he he could have he could get the credentials to do so, but yet uh, he you know he's he could he's going to be shut out. So if he converts, he's only just going to be just a layperson. Okay, Joe, can I give you an example of a layperson? You're looking at one bald headed old lay a layperson. All right, Terry Barb, I've been doing this 38 years. It's not so much what you want to do. It's what God calls you. I was in a monastery, Joe. I was asked to leave. That's awesome. I was, I was asked to leave. And guess what? How did that, how did that sit well with you? It sit, well, you know what? <laughs> Actually, I didn't let the door hit me on the way out, Joe, to be quite honest. 
I kind of figured I wasn't a good fit there, okay, because of the story. If you ever read my book, How to Share Your Faith with Anyone, my point to you is this. If Rick Warren is called and he comes to the Catholic faith, and he's not whether he is a layman or a priest, it's what God wants. I've been able to distribute 30 million recordings uh, through Scott Hahn, Bishop Sheen, in 37 years. I've been responsible with Lighthouse Catholic Media, Catholic Resource Center, and St. Joseph's, okay, as a layman. Some people say that I did more work for the Catholic Church as a layman than as a priest. Now, I realize one Mass is more important than anything I've ever done, but it's not about what we think you should. It's what God calls people to do, Joe. So I believe that Rick Warren will come into the Catholic Church. That's my take. And when he does... yeah, I, when he does, brother, he is going to affect the church in a real positive way. But you, I want to hear I what you have so to say, too. brother. I think so, too, and I hope he's called to the priesthood. Okay, well, there you go. We'll pray it. So let's pray a prayer for Rick right now. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, sure. amen. Dear Lord, we ask you to give Rick Warren and all of his people in his church the grace to see the beauty of the Eucharist, of our church, Our Lady. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, amen. Son, Holy amen. Spirit, amen. Before I turn it over to Jesse, I just want to remind you, Joe, I had a dinner with Dr. Scott Hahn in October, and he told me that Rick Warren has, has read The Lamb's Supper, and he's reading other books of Scott Hahn. I'm going to tell you, after 38 years, when I hear that, it's just a matter of time, brother. Jess, your, th- your thoughts? Yeah, the only thing that I would say is that there has been some incredible lay people that have, have in, affected the church. One of them, again, I can just tell you, Scott Hahn. Yep. He's a lay person. He's got... Uh, all, you know, nine kids. Terry Barber, he, this my partner here started St. Joseph's Communications, Lighthouse Catholic Media, the Catholic Resource Center. Uh, I mean, you know, Brian Birch from Catholic Vote, Tom Peterson oh, from yeah. Catholics Come Home, Pat Madrid. I mean, these are all men Layman. with families. Yeah. And these guys have affected the Catholic Church far more than most people. And so I think God can ver- work very powerfully with a layperson. If Rick Warren, if, and I'm saying if he ever converted, I don't think he'd be called to the priesthood because, again, he's, he's married and he has, a, well, he has a, two kids. One committed suicide unless he went to the Eastern, uh, Eastern Rite. But there you have to be celibate. Uh, or Terry, what's the, yeah, the, yeah, the you practice can't, with the Eastern Rite? Yeah, they only ordain uh, married uh, men. So let's say, for example... Yeah, he would have to be. It's possible. And there's also that possibility, Joe, that, you know, there's been exceptions with the Anglicans. I have friends who are priests who are uh, fathers and husbands. So it's possible. But my, my big point, and I think Jesse's point, is that whatever God calls you to be, that's who you're supposed to be. And if it's a priest, a layman, you know, God's will be done. That's most important. Sometimes we, we kind of, in my humble opinion, we want to do it our way. And I always joke, Joe, you want to hear my song? You know what they sing in heaven? I did it his way. You know what they sing in hell? I did it my way. Joe, I want to hear your thoughts. I'm sorry to be funny about it, but that's that's just how I see it. No, 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 it's okay. Cause, <laughs> I mean, let's face it. The yeah. Catholic Church is facing a real issue with, with relating to and how they relate to other people. Well said. And, and especially within its power and uh, you know the control of the sacraments and everything else. So, Joe, Joe, I want to thank you for taking the time to call us, brother. We got the music coming. We're out of time, folks. If you'd like to join in on this conversation, call us at eight 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 five two six two one five one. The only thing that I would say is I don't I didn't understand what Joe meant by the Catholic Church controlling the sacraments. Oh, I didn't catch that. It's either. not controlling. It's it's the Catholic Church. This is a great gift that Jesus has given us, and we want to share this with the entire world. So that's the only thing that I would take issue with. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. Don't change that dial. We will be right back. And again and again and again. God love you. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. We're too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be billionaires. We're talking about Rick Warren's interview with Raymond Arroyo. And his admiration for the Catholic Church. It's a powerful interview. If you go online to, uh, I guess, our, our Twitter account, you get the Terry Jesse Twitter account, you can get links. Or you can go to YouTube and listen to the entire interview. But what I thought was so powerful was when Rick talked about divine mercy and how it is consoling him. And he understands much more about the Catholic faith through watching EWTN with the historical perspective. This is an ecumenical outreach, I believe. And the Bishop of Orange is also reaching out. They had a big uh, seminar 
on suicide and suffering. And I just think it's wonderful how Catholics and Protestants can join and reaching out to people with the message of Christ. If you want to get that DVD, I know that people have been calling for Father Calloway's DVD. We'll call you back if we can't reach all the calls, but you can call 877-526-2151. I made a mistake earlier in the show. Our Saturday monthly meeting is on the 13th, not the 11th. Love to see. I'd love to meet with you if you're in Southern California and you want to come to our second Saturday of each month meetings. We just start with this month. Father John Strusel will be here with Mass, Confession. We want to build you up. That's our whole point here at the Terry and Jesse Show. If you have a question or comment on these topics, maybe you've lost somebody uh, through suicide. Maybe, maybe you've got an insight on suffering that you want to share. Call us at 888-526-2151. That's 888-526-2151. That's precisely what I want to talk about right now. I want to con- give people... The church's teachings, which are so beautiful and consolation if you know somebody, a loved one that has committed suicide. Don't change the dial. What you're going to hear right now is going to be life-changing. Life-changing. Okay. So what does the church teach about suicide? It's in paragraph 2280 to 2282. Okay. I'll, I'll make it brief. Everyone is responsible for his life before God who has given it to him. It is God who remains the sovereign master of life. We are obliged to accept life gratefully and preserve it for his honor and the salvation of our souls. We are stewards, not owners, of the life God has entrusted to us. It's not ours to dispose of. Now, it says, If suicide is committed with the intention of setting an example, especially to the young, it also takes on the gravity of scandal. Voluntary cooperation in suicide is contrary to the moral law. Okay, get this. This is important. Grave psychological disturbances, anguish, or grave fear of hardship, suffering, or torture can diminish, I'll repeat that again, can diminish the responsibility of one committing suicide. The church says, we should not despair of the eternal salvation of persons who have taken their lives, their own lives. By ways known to God alone, God can provide the opportunity for salutary repentance. And the church prays for persons who have taken their own lives. Okay, so here's basically what it's saying. I'll break it down. A mortal sin requires, number one, full knowledge. Number two, deliberate consent of the will. Number three, grave matter. What the church is saying is that if somebody has diminished capacity, that's the church's language, diminished capacity, psychological disturbances, anguish, grave fear of hardship, suffering or torture, then the person doesn't have full knowledge. And so it can diminish the culpability. And so you have to have all three for it to be a mortal sin. Full knowledge, deliberate consent, Absolutely, Jesse. And Jesse, I want to mention to our listeners that there's a great story from St. John Vianney. He gives a story about a man coming up to John Vianney saying, my son jumped off the bridge. He committed suicide. And I feel terrible about his, you know, where did his soul go? And John Vianney said, you can't presume he knew what he was doing. And maybe if he did, and when he, from the time he uh, jumped off the bridge and by the time he hit the water, he might have had repentance going on and asking for forgiveness. And so we can't judge that. And that's what St. John Vianney told the Father, that, uh, you know, we don't know. And that's why what the, the beautiful teachings of the Catholic Church have developed in the sense of understanding uh, the psychological issues with suicide. Now, if you have a question or a comment on this topic and you agree or disagree, you're welcome to call us at 888-526-2151. That's 888 888- Five two six two one five one. If you want to look it up in the Catechism, paragraph twenty two eighty to eighty three. That's what Jesse was referring to. And again, this is not Jesse Romero's opinion or Terry Barber's opinion. We're not interested in our opinions. We want to know what the mind of the Church teaches because this is what sets us free. The truth. It's not like well, my opinion. And I know we've got our lines lit up, but Jess, can you tell the listeners briefly again? I I want to make sure those who just tuned in don't hear about divine mercy, because I believe divine mercy 
is there for, remember, divine mercy, this is the year of mercy. All we have to do is ask Jesus for forgiveness. Remember, divine mercy isn't like, oh, it just, God forgives everybody no matter what. No, there's a, there's a requirement for divine mercy. You have to ask and be forgiven. You have to say, I want forgiveness, and Jesus will forgive you. As the Pope's new book says, God's name is mercy. Yes, uh, P- Father Benedict Rochelle, he really cleared this thing up for me a couple of years ago. He was doing a radio show, may he rest in peace. And he said, Father Benedict Rochelle yeah. said mm-hmm. that Jesus Christ appeared to St. Faustina, and Jesus Christ told her in 1931 that at the moment of death, Jesus Christ will appear to every person at that moment of death. At that nanosecond, microsecond, Mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ will give them the opportunity to repent and to accept his divine mercy. When I was listening to Father Groeschel, I was was floored when he said that. And then Father Groeschel went on and he said, what I'm telling you is in paragraph 1486 of the Diary of the Divine Mercy. And so if you want to read, here's what Jesus told St. Faustina. A soul steeped in darkness, do not despair. All is not yet lost. Come and confide in your God who is love and mercy. For me, there is no, the soul says, for me, there is no mercy. And the soul falls into greater darkness, a despair, which is a foretaste of hell and makes it unable to draw near to God. Jesus calls the soul a third time, but the soul remains deaf and blind hearted and despairing. Then the mercy of God begins to exert itself. And without any cooperation from the soul, God, uh, God grants it final grace. If this too is spurned, God will leave the soul in the self-chosen disposition for eternity. The grace emerges from the merciful heart of Jesus and gives the soul a special light by means of which the soul begins to understand God's effort. But conversion depends on its own will. The soul knows that this, for her or him, is the final grace. And should it show even a flicker of goodwill... The mercy of God will accomplish the rest. So what Jesus told St. Faustina, the last moment of a person's life, God, Jesus Christ will appear. And if that person shows, God will give you grace at that moment. If that person shows a flicker of goodwill to repent, God will have mercy on that soul. And, that's, and, and, and Father Groeschel was talking about in the context of suicide. Well said. Let's go to Sandy in California. Sandy, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Hi, you guys. Thank you. And you Hi. interviewed me in December. Oh, good, Sandy. Um, and I really, oh, I know who you are. You're up in Northern California. I remember you, Sandy. Go ahead. You're a convert to the Catholic faith. I remember. Yes. Hi. So, um, you know, I'm just fascinated by Rick Warren. Yeah. And he seems home. And he reminds me so much of me as a previous. <laughs> good. Fundament, I was a fundamentalist Protestant myself, uh-huh. evangelical, and I was so hungry for something, and it looks like he's really hungry for something as well. So that is so wonderful and so encouraging. And I guess the comment I wanted to make mm-hmm. is my experience um, in the Catholic world is that people have been so um, compassionate and loving and understanding toward Protestants, really bending over backwards, sometimes sure. a little too much, in my opinion. Whereas in the Protestant world, I've seen, especially um, the non-denominational Protestant world, I've seen a lot of hostility. I experienced a lot of hostility. People actually stopped talking to me when I decided to become a Catholic, and they wouldn't come to my sacraments. So I guess the point I want to make is is a little bit different than a a previous caller, Mm -hmm. that I think the problem is really more um, with the Protestants, a a lack of understanding, whereas I feel that the Catholics have... They're really understanding of Protestantism, Protestantism and very accepting to a fault. I think it's actually a little bit too much to the point where a lot of Catholics will go to Lutheran services and Episcopalian and not even understand the difference. I had one person say to me, oh, I went to a Lutheran service, and boy, they do the, it's pretty much the same thing. And so it can get a little bit messed up. And if I could just make one other real sure. quick comment, and then I'll stop. Go ahead. Um, when I first uh, was interested in becoming a Catholic, what a priest explained to me um, is that Vatican II, the trend toward ecumenicalism, wasn't really so much bringing everybody together, everyone understanding each other, that that's something that's gotten kind of extreme. He said that the, that really um, the idea was 
to try to return back to the Church the Orthodox Christians exactly. and possibly the Episcopalians. But it's not sort of, a, a, I think it's become a little kumbaya, we're all the same, let's hold hands kind of thing, as opposed to Catholics understanding that we are different. And we can be uh, compassionate and understanding, but it's not the same thing. It's not the same presence of Jesus in the Mass, and, and we are different. Yeah. Sandy, you've made uh, some very good points. I thank you, and I'm, I'm glad you called. Call us any time. And, you know, if you read the, uh, read the ecumenism document, yes, that you're absolutely right. When John Paul, uh, when, uh, when I should say uh, John the Twenty Third talked about ecumenism, that's exactly what he was working on doing. And again, we're trying to reach out to our Protestant brothers because we have the fullness of the faith. And you again, sometimes people just think that you know we just want to share and have the kumbaya. No, this is we want to bring people to Christ and the fullness of the faith. Thanks so much for calling, Sandy. We've got to take a break. If you'd like to get that free DVD on the mercy of God with Father Callaway, call us at eight seven seven. 526-2151 and you can join us also by calling another number. We'll be right back. This CatholicRC.org Thanks for your donations. Let's have it happen again and again and again. God love you. We're back. This is the Terry and Jesse Show. This is the Lord's Gym. His pain is your gain. We're talking about ecumenism. We're talking about divine mercy. We're even talking about suicide let me just mention that this Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to be at St. Paul's Church here in Phoenix, Arizona at the Charismatic Conference. That's that's this Saturday and Sunday, February 13th and 14th. I'll be presenting both days at St. Paul's Catholic Church here in Phoenix, Arizona at the 24th Annual Charismatic Conference. If you want to sign up, you can go to Charismatic, excuse me, CatholicRenewalMinistries.com, CatholicRenewalMinistries.com. There was a, a, a young man in my neighborhood I want to talk about how powerful the divine mercy is. He was a he was a kid that was unchurched. In fact, he was dabbling into Satanism. Ooh. He had satanic tattoos in, in, in different parts of his body. He was using the Ouija board, a fallen away Catholic that rejected God openly. Well, uh, I, I we're friends with the family. I know the mother and father and stuff. You know, I kind of an acquaintance. I don't know them well, but the long and the short of it, the young man committed suicide. He hung himself. Now, uh, there was a friend of mine that's a practicing Catholic that was across the street and heard the parents screaming. And my friend, who's a practicing Catholic, ran across the street and walked, ran into the garage and saw the neighbor, this kid who was a Satanist, fallen away Catholic who's now a Satanist. He was hanging from the rafter with a noose and the parents were just petrified with fear my friend who's a practicing catholic he grabbed the young man he was frothing at the mouth he was gurgling you know he was spit uh, he was still there was that's what you call the death pangs he picked up the kid he cut off the noose brought him down to the floor called 911 started doing cpr and as he was doing CPR, the kid was still alive. He started praying the divine mercy in his ear. As he was doing CPR, he was praying the divine mercy in his ear. The paramedics came. They took the kid. He was barely breathing. They said he may not make it. He gets to the hospital. My friend gets to the hospital behind the paramedics, calls a, the Catholic chaplain in the hospital. The Catholic chaplain uh, gives him the anointing of the sick. The guy's in a coma. This kid's in a coma, and my friend prays the divine mercy in his ear again. Okay, this kid, this Satanist kid, ends up dying. He died a couple of hours later uh, of the ligature marks around his neck. He'd done too much damage to his neck. Well, his father had called me up a few weeks after everything the dust had settled, and his father, who's now a practicing Catholic as a result of this tragic event, the father called me up and said, Jesse, he was like crying on the phone. He goes, Jesse, my son appeared to me last night. He was at the foot of my bed. Me and my wife saw him at the foot of our bed. And they're both two simple, pious Catholics that are just come back to the church after being unevangelized and unchurched for 25 years. And the man told me, Jesse, my son told me, he goes, Dad, Dad, I'm burning. It's hot here. Dad, it's burning. Dad, you need to, you need to have 30 masses offered for me. Dad, I need 30 masses offered for me. Dad, it's burning. So the father called me up and he said, Jesse, what does this mean? What does this mean? I said, there's a tradition in the Catholic Church. It's called Requiem Masses. 
when a soul is in purgatory, if you offer 30 masses for a soul in purgatory, uh, the soul will be released after the 30th mass. I said, your son told you this? See, their son was a Satanist. He was totally unchurched. His son wouldn't have known this. And the father and mother, they were also very low information Hispanic Catholics. They would not have known this. They can't even read. So for them to say, my son appeared to me and was crying and screaming, saying, I want 30 masses. I said, I told, my, I told him immediately. I said, run to the nearest rectory right now <laughs> and offer 30 consecutive masses for your son. Amen. Your son, it looks like, it look, he, I told him what happened. I said, your son, obviously, Jesus appeared to him. Like St. Faustina said in, in paragraph 1486 of the diary, your son had, a, had God's grace and everybody's prayers, and your son repented, and your son accepted Jesus. Now your son is making atonement for his sins in purgatory, and that's why he appeared to you to ask you to celebrate 30 masses for the repose of his soul so he can be released and go to heaven. That's the power of the divine mercy. I'm telling you, this kid was a Satanist. This kid has satanic tattoos on his body. He hadn't been inside a Catholic church in over 12 years. He rejected the Catholic faith. But God, in his mercy, through his mom and dad's prayers, reached him at the moment when he was gurgling and dying with a noose around his neck. And apparently this kid must have repented and accepted Christ because of that vision and the Requiem Masses that were celebrated, I believe we'll see this kid one day again. Terry. That story, if you want to hear it again, go to our website, catholicrc.org. That's a powerful story. You can share it with your friends anywhere, catholicrc.org. We're going to go to Chris in Texas. Before I do that, don't forget, we're giving away Father Donald Calloway's DVD on Divine Mercy. As you know, he was in the fast lane before he became a Catholic and then a Catholic priest, Wine, Women, and Song. And he talks about his conversion. But then he prays the Divine Mercy chaplet with you and gives you the background on Divine Mercy. You can get that $20 DVD for free by calling 877-526-2151. Chris in Texas, thanks for waiting. You're on with Jesse Romero and Terry Barber. Hey, good afternoon, guys. How you doing? We're too blessed to be stressed, Chris. Glad you called. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. Hey, uh, so my, my question is more directed for, I guess, to both of you, but yeah, Jesse made sure. the comments earlier sure. about uh, Benedict Rochelle yeah. uh, and the diaries of, of St. Faustina. Right. And and I'd like to get that page reference again from her diaries because I'd like to look it up. But I, I guess I need clarification on, on what, I guess, what what Jesse was saying about um, God appearing to or Jesus appearing to us uh, at the moment of our death, right, and, yeah. and seeing if we'd like to accept his mercy but it, I thought I, I thought you had mentioned that he appeared to us would appear to us after we die, or you know, if in cases of suicide, uh, were you saying that he would appear to us after we die or at the moment of our death? And the reason I ask this is because I was always under the impression that you know after your soul had separated from your body and you're dead, uh, that the time for mercy would be over then would proceed the time for judgment. So I, I just wanted clarification sure. on, are you saying yeah. at the moment of death or after death? Great question, Chris. Jesse? You, you're, Chris, you're right. It's at the moment of death. You're right. It's not, it's after, not after death because... It's done. He, yeah. In fact, where I got all this information from is in paragraph of the Divine Mercy. If you want to read the paragraph, it's paragraph 1486 of the Divine Mercy. Now, this is the way, as you read it, Here's Father Groeschel, because Father Groeschel, he comments on that passage. Here's what Father Groeschel says in his own words. Father Groeschel says this, quote, We see that God, in, after reading this passage, 1486, we see God in his infinite mercy pursues even a soul steeped in darkness that is falling ever deeper into despair. All that is needed for the soul to receive God's mercy is a flicker of goodwill awesome. as final grace is given. Father Groeschel says, so in the millionth of a millionth of a second between life and death, when time stops for the soul, Jesus himself can certainly be his own apostle. He calls even to the despairing and hopeless soul. I believe that he does. When he says, final, Father Groeschel says, all of us who are devoted to our Savior, 
and his urgent message of mercy need to spread this good news throughout the church and among our non-Catholic friends. Uh, so you can get that from paragraph 1486 of the Catechism. And also Father Groeschel wrote a pamphlet. It's, it's, uh, the, pla- the pamphlet is called Divine Mercy in the Time of Tragedy. It says, Jesus offers final grace for the souls who die unprepared in tragedies. And this pamphlet is offered by the, the Association of Marian Helpers uh, over... Uh, that's, uh, Stockbridge, that's Father, Massachusetts. Uh, yeah. Father Callaway. Yeah, got it. Okay. Stockbridge. Did that help, Joe? Or Chris? I'm sorry, Chris. Joe's next. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> it, it did. Thank you very much. The, the other reason I was wanting to know or get clarification is because I teach a confirmation class. Sure. And I, I stress to my students the importance of frequenting the sacrament of confession. And I always tell them that they need to frequent that sacrament because when we're alive on earth, that's when God's mercy is most abundant to us by going to that sacrament. And I also tell them that after they're dead, that the time for mercy is over. It's now the time for judgment. So that, that's why I wanted clarification. And thank you very much for providing. Our pleasure. And Joe, if you send me an email, I'm going to give you five benefits of frequent confession at terry at stjoe.com. It's powerful. Confession helps us to know ourselves better. St. Augustine, I got all these quotes. Since you asked that, email terry at stjoe.com, and I'll send you the five benefits of frequent confession you can share it with your your class chris thanks again for your call god love you we've got uh joe before we go to joe we only have a minute joe so if you got a quick question welcome to the terry and jesse show it's real quick i'm a return caller hey i was just about the 30 masses is that the 30 masses that the priest offers himself or 30 masses that we go to to pray for the repose of the soul no, it's uh, it's thirty masses that you offer the, for the repose of the yeah, soul, whether exactly. you go or not. Right. right. Yeah, you have you and have so we, to offer thirty masses for the repose of the soul, whether you go or not. So, uh, the mass is valid and efficacious, whether you're there or not. And so, is that offered by, um, you know, request and money? Yes, you're going to have a exactly. You're going to ask for a little. They're stipend for a mass. Matter of fact, uh, at Lighthouse Catholic Media, we've got fourteen thousand masses we've had offered. Uh, since we began for every parish okay. that we work with. So, yeah, the Mass is an, uh, is an amazing uh, prayer. It's the greatest prayer on earth. Joe, we're out of time. The music's on, but I hope that answered your question, brother. Yep. All sure right, does. man. Thank you. God love you. Folks, again, if you want to get that free DVD with Father Calloway uh, on the mercy of God, this is a great way to teach the mercy of God. This is the year of mercy. Let's talk more about mercy. And so Father Calloway's DVD, it's a $20 DVD. You can get it by calling 877-526-2151. Jesse, your final thoughts. Yep, the only thing I want to say is this. We have 50 states in our country. There's one state that every Catholic should want to live in. That's the state of grace. And there's one state that no Catholic should want to live in. That's the state of mortal sin. Well said, my brother. Don't forget, folks, call 877-526-2151. May God richly bless you and your family.